And we are live. And today we've got Heather Disher on the call. And we're going to speak about all things uh, integrator and visionary dynamics. And if you're not sure what integrator is, stay tuned. We're not only going to teach you about it, but teach you about who to hire for the perfect fit in that role. Heather, how are you doing today? I'm really good. Thanks, Barry. It's so glad fun. to have you here. And if you're joining us live on any of the platforms, uh, please make sure you like and share this. This is going to be a very hot interview. And also, just letting you know, one of my team is going to be interacting with you guys throughout. Uh, so make sure you ask any questions you need to ask, which will come through to me. And uh, keep the share and the like buttons happening as well. So Heather, you've been with the Game Changers now for about nine months. Mm, yeah, nine months uh, in about two weeks. Not, oh, not that I'm counting or anything. Not that you're counting. <laughs> that bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, so for anyone watching, listening to this today live or uh, on the replay as well, can you share like what is your role at the Game Changers? What's the kind of job title, so to speak? So an integrator, um, there are a number of different um, types of integrators, but an integrator is generally a general manager or someone who's really overseeing the operational component of the business. So somebody who's across the, the key elements of the operations, the admin, the IT, the HR, the finance, and he's there in the marketing and sales, and he's there to really support the vision and the ideas that the visionary or the CEO creates. So somebody that facilitates and make sure that everything goes into place and it functions the day-to-day -day of the business, generally. Yeah. I almost feel like there should be like uh, angel wings on either side of the, on the role title, like integrator, uh, head game changer and so forth, because I can say from my own experience, like it is a game changing experience for a business to be at a position to hire in uh, what most people know as, the, the, as general manager, but we're gonna say integrator for the purpose mm -hmm. of today's interview. Uh, into the business because there's, there's a few things. Number one, uh, I feel the business should be at a level where, first of all, it's profitable. Uh, second of all, there's some level of sustainability about it. And third of all, you've kind of passed the, the million or the few million dollar mark yeah. to where you can afford to hire a high level person in that position. And for the visionary to start to step back a little bit out of the operations or, or in my case, all the way out of the operations to really allow the visionary to have more time to, to create to innovate, uh, to bring the ideas to the table, but also to have that integrator essentially being the, the filter between the visionary and the business, the, the rest of the business. You know, like we see a lot of businesses where there's not this relationship in place, either A, the business is too small or B, the business owners, you know, the business is bigger, but the business owner is still a control freak. And I think it really starves the business of the potential. Can you maybe share like, what are some of the key things you feel with integrator's role are important for you to steer the ship and to keep things moving in the right direction? I think the, the key element is understanding the business, having access to, to the business, understanding the people and their roles and how you can support the people. Nobody, no business is successful because of one person or the That's owner. It's, yeah. a, it's all about um, in the teamwork and the people. So it's about managing all of that, connecting all of those things together. And it's also about having a really good relationship with the CEO and the visionary so that you can understand what it is that the business is doing and where it is the business is going. Yeah. So that's a really critical element. If I can understand that from, you know, from, from someone like yourself and that relationship is really good, then I know what it is I need to do. And then I can go about get about doing that with the right people, the right team, understanding what it is that needs to happen. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, God, there's so much I want to try to fit into today's topic because it's it's one that's very close to my heart and one that I know we've helped a lot of our clients um, get to the position of, of being ready for that, mm -hmm. uh, finding someone and transitioning through the other side of that because it doesn't just stop when you hire someone yeah. uh, into that role, like a lot of other roles. It's an ongoing relationship. And you mentioned before, like the relationship is so vital and so important. So if you're watching this uh, interview live that on any of the platforms, please ask any questions you've got. I want to make sure that we get them answered. Uh, and the question I've got for you to kick us off is, do you currently have um, someone that sits in the, the, the role of general manager, uh, integrator or COO? It might be uh, what people refer to it as currently. So let me know in the chats. Uh, do you currently have someone that sits in that, that COO, general manager or integrator's role currently? So there's a few things, Heather, like, I guess let's talk, let's talk the journey like preparation. What do you feel a business needs to do or to have in place uh, to hire for that role? And the reason that this is so important is that, that, that I see many business owners, I know we see many business owners that kind of 
operate one of two ways. They either A, they try to hold on to the steering wheel way too tight and drive the car all on their own, which starves growth and, and starves the ability for the business to truly thrive. Uh, and no, or number two is they're just willing to hand over the steering wheel willy-nilly, willing, willing-nilly to anybody who comes along. And they, they do what Michael Gerber talks about in the e-myth, which is like delegating through abdication. It's like, oh, I've hired, I've hired someone who's good at finance. You do all the finance stuff and they stop looking at it. Oh, I've hired someone who's great at sales. You do all the sales. They stop looking at it, which is actually not a smart way of doing things no. because it can land you in a lot of trouble very quickly. You know, my past business, we were in a position where I found out eventually that we missed out on $50,000 claimed on GST because the person I had doing my books who I hired as an expert and I delegated through abdication. I made that mistake. I gave it to them, wasn't doing their job properly. They were stressed and overwhelmed. They were, they were putting all these fake um, allocations in my P&Ls to balance the books, which cost me a lot of money, cost him his job when I found out and cost us a lot of growth. So what do you think are the key things we need to do in preparation prior to being in a position to hire somebody in that integrator's role? I think firstly, um, the integrator is not a role that you delegate. An integrator is a role that exists because the business is in a particular position. And that position could be that for a period of time, whether that be six months, a year, a couple of years, the business is consistently in, you know, going forward, not backwards. Yeah. It's consistently either being sustainable or it's consistently growing. The team is getting bigger. You've got bigger ideas. The clients are going forward. There's progression in the business. Once you get progression in the business, you've got your finance is right. You haven't delegated it out to somebody. You're not checking. So as a business owner, you are across the business, but you're starting to get to a position where to manage the day to day, you're working in the business as opposed to on the business. Yeah. So you're not going to delegate the role. You're going to bring somebody in to work with you so that they can manage the business and then you can look at taking the business to the next level. Yeah. I, lo I loved um, what you shared there around make sure the business is moving forward sustainably and consistently or something along those lines, because yeah. I see two people make the mistake of like, uh, like, oh, we just need to hire someone to fix the problems we've got. Yet the issue is with that is it's kind of like throwing petrol on an existing fire, hoping it will burn itself out. It might eventually, but it's not the most, uh, effective way to be putting out the fire. Hey, Sammy. Hey, Cheryl. I uh, noticed a couple of guys have joined on. Uh, we're talking all things visionary integrator, which Sammy, I know is a topic that you absolutely love. Um, so yeah, it's about getting the business to a position because I think that if the CEO can't first uh, be disciplined enough and take the right actions in place to see the business grow consistently, their leadership's going to fall short of making the most out of hiring. Number one, hiring and finding the right integrator because they won't be coming from a, a, a sustainable place when they hire that would be more so like let's just fill the role and get yeah. someone in rather than let's take our time and get the right person for this role that's really going to you know manage all aspects and be a phenomenal culture fit and obviously second at that too that, that you can lead them effectively because they just said like it's not a role that you delegate it's not just a role that you bring in and be like oh there you go catch you later there's a lot more in play than that so yeah. so that being said before we go into kind of the role itself let's kind of talk the journey what are some of the things you should be looking for then if that's where the business needs to get to, to where it's, it's growing consistently, um, teams are starting to build, momentum is starting to build. What are some things you need? You think that we need to start looking for in hiring a, a phenomenal integrator or you know, general manager? I think the, one, of the, one of the things is, um, you know, do you want somebody with industry experience? Is that important? Um, sometimes that is important. Sometimes it's better to bring in fresh eyes. Absolutely. Because businesses all have the same pillars. They all have the same requirements. There are some intricacies. So looking at, you know, that particular area. The other thing to look at is as the CEO, there's the visionary, what type of personality do you have and what, who will you work best with? Yeah. So where is that really good sort of match? Will you connect with somebody really well? Where do you, you know, where, where will you rub up against them? Where will you make it easy, hard, indifferent? So that kind of look, then you're looking at the culture. So what type of person will fit in with that culture and take the culture and drive that culture further, as well as, you know, what sort of background do they have? What sort of skill set do they have? Sometimes an integrator is across everything and we're, we're not all the best at everything. We've got some areas of weakness and some areas of high skill and, and uh, extra strength. So it's like, what is that balance? And is that balance the right fit for the business? Mm. It's funny. I was just, well, the reason I was smirking a little bit, I was remembering an earlier conversation we had today around dating um, and dating apps when you said that, 
right? Um, and, and the reason being, I was trying to think of an analogy, but like hiring general staff, and when I say general staff, you know, people from anything from an admin role through to even like a management role, I guess it's kind of like maybe picking a school for your child. Like you've got some, you've got some choices, but there's, there is limitations to, to hiring that. Whereas the integrator is more so, I guess, like hiring a living nanny. Yeah. The roles and responsibilities are far greater. The relationship's got to be great. They've got to fit in. They've got to fit in with that family, with their lifestyle, with their values. And this is why it's probably, I think, one of the most crucial roles um, and delicate roles to hire for as well. And it's something that took us, like, I reckon we were, we were recruiting maybe 12 months before we got to hiring you. We weren't in a rush. We wanted to do it right. We had some strict criteria, but a lot of the criteria didn't come until we'd actually interviewed other people. Yeah. And through the interview process, we started to learn, oh, we didn't think about that criteria or that criteria to get to the point because it's not like a general role. I don't believe, my personal opinion is, it's not like a general role where it's like, let's just find someone with great culture fit and, and, and a level of skill set and train them. No, because they've got to bring something to the business that that I, I feel is to some degree a weakness of the business owner. Like if I was just going to hire someone that was good that I had to train, right? I, I know I wasn't a good integrator. Like I know I'm, I'm not very good at managing staff. I'm a good leader, but leading and managing a very different skill set. I find I shine when I'm leading my team, but I'm terrible if I've got to manage them and manage KPIs and manage the detail and things of the business. And, and that's not something that I feel I can necessarily train someone amazing on. They've, they've got to have that past experience. Yeah, I, I love what you said too. Let's talk a bit more about, um, you know, why would we want to hire someone maybe that's got industry experience versus not? Because this was a thing that we, between me and my board of directors, we tossed around for a while. It's like, do we hire someone who's got industry experience or do we hire someone outside the industry, which is the decision we eventually made? I think um, over the course of my career, that's been something that's come up a lot of times in different yeah. businesses. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think that there's definitely some industries where it's a plus. Yeah. There might be a heap of compliance. There might be a number of different areas where it's an essential that there's, you know, people understand that but the particular nuances in the industry compared to others that don't. But as I was saying before, I come from the school of thought where it's less about the industry and more about the business and the type of business you're running, how you're connecting with your customers, what you're trying to achieve where you're at at the moment, where you're going into the future, you know, what, uh, you know, what is the, the, what is the overview of the industry or what's sort of going on in the industry? Anybody in this, in, in this type of role that I'm in the integrator role at this level can fit into any industry anywhere. Um, you, we can, um, you know, do some research into particular areas of the industry. We've got enough, um, you know, wisdom and enough nouns to understand what works and what doesn't, what's important and what's not. Mm. As I said, there are some industries like medical, um, you know, some in the health industries where it's, sometimes it's critical to take on board somebody with um, industry experience, but not always. Mm. I mean, we had a conversation before I was hired about, you know, I had a, a private hospital that was interested in taking me on board. I know nothing about hospitals and that's what they mm. wanted. They actually wanted somebody to think outside the box. And when you're looking at, particularly with business development, it's like, where can the company go? If you're mm. stuck within an industry model, you can't see beyond that quite often. So it really does depend on a number of other elements, whether there's a critical factor with the industry or whether there's, it can be somebody that's the right fit for the business. Yeah. And, and it might, might, this may very much be my limiting thinking, but I think hiring someone who's got industry experience there could be a, a potential cap there, right? As opposed to someone who hasn't, they're coming in unjaded by past industries and what works and what doesn't work. They're just coming in totally open to the opportunities. We find this with salespeople too. Like if we have a salesperson that's come in and we've changed our offer, we've changed our picture series of times, they have certain beliefs around what's possible. And we've seen this before. You hire a new salesperson that comes in and you're like, this is just what it is. This is where it's at. And they go, they go to town, not, not constrained by past yeah. experiences of what worked and what didn't work. Yeah. They want to say clean. And this is why like a lot of, a lot of uh, great business leaders talk about the importance of cycling people in the integrators role, cycling them through because it brings that fresh new ideas and it brings yeah. a fresh sense of what's possible for the business as well. Uh, we just had a question here from Sheila from Brisbane. And if you're watching this live, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, please start a watch party. This is an important conversation to share with business owners around how they can truly free themselves. And it's something I speak about a lot in my book that I'm releasing in a few weeks time called The Path 
to freedom, the nine steps to create a profitable and purpose-driven business that can work without you. Uh, so Sheila asks, now that we're talking how to uh, screen talent, the pandemic actually just altered the human resources landscape, not threatened it. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would. And I would agree that it did alter it in an amazing, uh, you know, opportunistic way. There are now people that have that are looking at the job they have if they've still got one and whether they still want to do that, whether that is given that we've been sort of stripped down to our basic or essential element items, particularly in Australia here, we weren't as restricted as some of other places like some of our staff members in, in Asia. But, you know, there's people that are now looking at, am I getting what, you know, the passion and joy out of my job? I've got amazing talent. Can it be placed somewhere else? There's people that have lost jobs everywhere. There's such an opportunity to talk to people that normally wouldn't be available in, mm. the, in the marketplace. Mm. So mm. I think that there's is just a fantastic opportunity to access hidden talent, that talent that just wasn't there before for you. Yeah, and I, I guess this has been a press yeah, like a reason behind starting the Freedom Series. Like we knew something was going to happen this year. We didn't know it was quite going to be COVID. We knew something was going to happen, and it just so happened that it timed perfectly with the launch of the book. And the reason this is important is I think now more than ever there is a responsibility that we have as entrepreneurs and as business owners for the future of our economy. Like, I don't think that we can rely on the governments, not that we necessarily ever have, but I think that entrepreneurship and business owners have the opportunity to, to build a better country, to build a better world. And I guess, you know, what we teach and what I'm sharing in that book is, is how to free yourself for the business owner to truly sit into the role of visionary. Because I think that, and certainly for my own journey and for the, for the hundreds and thousands of people we've coached as well, having the business owner in the visionary role and having a, a good integrator, having a, a good team behind them, really allows them to create something magnificent. And, and we just we just can't do that when we're stuck in the business, yeah. you know? So I guess this Freedom Series is to bring more information and more of that, those proven strategies. And it's not just strategy, it's psychology as well. Like for a business owner to exit, it's not just, oh, put some systems in place, hire some great team members, hire an integrator and get the hell out of the way. It, it's not that simple. If it was, more people would be doing it and more people would be successful. Building businesses are challenging, but it's not impossible. And so I guess I ask anyone that's watching this now, please start a watch party, share this around, take people and they need to hear it because we do have the knowledge and the skill set to help people and, and the passion as well. And I think what you shared is a really good point, Heather. And there's one other part I want to add to that. And that's that this forced shutdown and lockdown has forced companies to innovate and get up to speed with the 21st century. Like I was in Perth City this morning and it was a ghost town. I had to remind myself it was Monday. Like it was like a Sunday walking around there because there's a lot of businesses that are still allowing their staff to now work remotely and work from home, right, since this. And have actually found that their companies are more profitable, their employees are happier and more productive through working home. That opens up a huge opportunity in, in HR because we now can, and we've been doing this for years, but now companies can hire the best talent from wherever they are in the world. They no longer need to hire someone from Perth to show up at a Perth office or from Brisbane to show up at a business office. They can hire the best person in that particular role in the world, incentivize them, bring them the culture. And I don't know about you, but like I think the culture we have at the Game Changers is far beyond any culture I've ever experienced in my life working anywhere. And we have a team, I think 16 odd staff now in the Game Changers alone, all remote, all working from home. And they have done for ages. Our culture is rocking because of the way we've built it. We don't need to have a water cooler or a pool table or to go out for Friday night drinks, it'd be amazing and nice and awesome. But you don't have to have that to build culture. I think that COVID's really allowed people to start to shift their paradigm around what's actually possible in building great businesses. Yeah. I think it's one of the things I, I love most about um, the Game Changers is our culture and our team. We are seriously good. I'm totally yeah. biased, but we are seriously good. I, 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 I agree. Fact, and... You know, if you've got a reaction to that, that's, that's okay. Maybe look at how you can create this for you too. Like, I'm okay with it too. It's not said from an egotistical place, but I've worked hard. I've been in business for 18 years. And this, this, I haven't had this like this before. I've had businesses where I was an employee in a multi-million dollar company with 20 odd other staff. You know, I had a business that fully relied on me. And this is why I guess this message is so important right now, because it is possible. Like if, if we can do it and our clients can do it, every business owner can do it. And that's what I want for them. Whether they work for us or not, it's not, not important. Like what I want to see is business owners liberated, liberated and like entrepreneurial poverty eradicated. Yeah. Like I think that, that everyone deserves to have that. 
So if we're talking like preparation and we're talking around starting to understand like who might be a good fit and how we go about hiring them, what do you think is really important about bringing them on? We, we did probably didn't go through, me and you didn't go through traditional onboarding per se. And we can talk about what we did and I can talk about why we did it the way that we did it. There was a reason. But what do you think for anyone watching, listening to this today, like would be the best approach once they've gone through, they've identified, yes, I need that role. They've done their research. They've found someone who's a good fit. And I think relationship is so important because we need, we need to get along. It doesn't mean you always tell me what I want to hear or vice versa, mm -hmm. but we need to have a very intimate relationship so that you can make calls on my behalf or on your own behalf and know you've got my backing. But also that dynamic is so, so, so important. Like I, I can trust you with anything, right? First and foremost, uh, let alone the fact that you're a good culture fit. And I think the thing that rang true for me, just, just remembering now, is when I first said the team, hey, like I've hired someone, like I'm out. I'm, I'm no longer going to be in the business. There's a lot of like, oh, we're going to miss you. Um, no, it's not going to be the same without you. Like you, you, you run, run the culture, blah, 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 blah. I stepped out. When COVID hit, I stepped back in and, and hustled for a few weeks with you guys to provide support for the team, to provide, provide support for clients. And then I said, hey, like this Thursday, I'm on a plane again leaving and I'm back out. And the team's response was, cool, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> and genuinely, cool, see you later. And that was when I was like, I was like, I knew that we had it right, but that was the further confirmation. I was like, we got it right. Because that they saw you as being their leader. They saw you as being such a pivotal role for the company culture. But let, let's jump back to the question I asked. Like, what do you think is an important steps once you've made that hire to make sure that it starts off right? Because how you create that foundation is going to be how it flourishes later on. Yeah. I think there's two things. One is that, like you said, the relationship between the visionary and the integrator is a critical element to the success of the team because it is a team it's a it's 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 a it's teamwork yeah so being able to during that onboarding process whether that's hours days weeks whatever it is for the business is that there's an opportunity to get together and talk about what it is is the vision what's the strategy what's your thoughts where where is where's the company now what's the vision for later like What's the plan? Yeah. Um, and it can be small, big. It, it doesn't matter. It's just get that, like, what is it? So that the integrator, as they're looking at everything, they're starting to formulate the plan as to how do I get there? So the second part is to, um, you know, give them a little bit of a guide as to this is the platforms, this is how our systems work, this is generally what you need to know so that you don't look like an idiot. Mm. That's always really nice. And then you just get out of the way. Yeah. I yeah. think it's, it's easier just to get out of the way and then you let the integrator kind of fit, get, a, get a feel for it. They can connect with the people. They can connect with the different systems, with the different requirements. At the same time, in the back of their mind, they've got the bigger picture. So yeah. everything they're looking at, the critical element for success longer term is that you understand where it is we're going. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. They're the two areas. I love that. Uh, make sure you guys watching, hit like, uh, drop a comment in, let us know what you're loving so far and if you've got any questions um, as well. Um, so there are a few things there that you said. I, I got invited into one of our members' trainings the other night by the coaches and we were talking about staff and I made some comment along the lines of like, I don't often give free advice, but if I was, it'd be hire the best people and get the fuck out of the way. And um, now there's elements of that. We're not talking uh, you know, delegation through abdication, mm -hmm. but we are talking around, uh, first of all, hiring the right person. Second of all, being able to let go. Now, the hardest part that people have when they hire the integrator, most roles, to be honest, but the integrator more so, is that because you're essentially handing over the steering wheel of the business, there's a lot of our identity as visionaries wrapped up trying to control things, which is what damages the relationship. Like I often look back and think, in the, in the early days, we didn't, act, we didn't make bad hires. We actually just didn't onboard them properly. We hired them and then we tried to micromanage them, tried to tell them how to do what they're doing. And I think what you said was really important is like, bring them on board. Your role as a visionary to go, hey, like, here's where I want to go. Like I said to you, hey, here's where I want to be in 10 years time. Like I knew what that was, a clear picture. And, and you've got a picture of that on your whiteboard. I know you do. And every yeah. day you're asking questions like, does this decision get us closer to that or further away? Yeah. And that's what allows you to calibrate without like we talk for an hour a week on a meeting and that's, an, that's enough for mm. you to steer and run the business and grow the business. I might add, not just steer and run yeah. it, grow it without me being involved because you're clear of where we're going and you're now across our resources, like our team, our cash and our systems and processes. Mm. And so it's like paint the picture for the, for the integrator of where you want to go, give them, a, give them an ideal an honest appraisal of where things are at, show them your strengths, show them the weaknesses, 
um, and then get the hell out of the way and allow them to do their dirty. Like if you've hired the right person, they shouldn't need you to handhold. Like this is a very senior position. And one thing that I loved about you, um, there's, there's a number of things through, but I said to you, like, what is your first, one of the questions on the interview was like, what did your first three months look like? Right. So asking questions that put the onus on you and something you talked about was like, it's really important for me to be across the team. So one of the first things I want to do is have one-on-ones with all the team. And I was like, excellent. Like, excellent. You, you made it about the team from the get-go. And I think that it's important to like allow roles, not just this role, but all roles to fail. Like fail is good because it shows you where the gaps are in the business. It shows you where the gaps are in the people and the processes and how to fix things. If you're trying to grow a business without failing, you're not growing anywhere near as fast as profitably or as fulfillingly as what you could be. Yeah. Any, any other important things? It's Sorry. It's a good, it's a good learning uh, curve as well. And it, and it creates good, good relationships too because there's always somebody to say, it's okay, together we'll get through it and it, it creates more teamwork as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's okay get it right every time. Yeah. Where do you feel like, um, be honest here, where do you feel that maybe we let you down as a company on the onboarding or we could have done a bit more to support you if there was anything? Um, and then also on the other side, like what do you think that we nailed when we brought you on board out of curiosity? Um. I think the small the small failing was the technology. Because it was remote, it's here's a list of all the things we use. Um, and here's your logins. So you go and log in and you look at them, you're like, right, so how does that connect to that? Yeah. And Slack is the communication channel, but then what's email and then what's Asana? Do we not communicate through those? So that was probably um and, and you know, we can laugh about this now, but my attempt at running the online wigs for the company, you know, the which company. Is, which, is, which is our weekly meeting. WIG stands for Wildly <laughs> Important Goals, yeah. <laughs> Was a thing of pure, you know. I, I forgot about that. I, <laughs> we used to give you so much shit about that. So bad. It was so bad. But it was like, this is like how you learn. Everybody would just laugh at me and I just... The team laughing. were like, who's this woman Barry's bought in? She can't even use Zoom. It was hilarious, but it's like trying to work things out so that it was, you know, so that they connected. So that was probably the, you know, the not so nice part. But, you know, I just laugh with it. It's fine. If the team can deal with it, I'm okay. And then I think some of the best parts was that my very first day after the first sort of half an hour, I met the entire company and, uh, you know, online, all of us together. um, And there was stuff going on everywhere. And I had, had no idea who was who. And it was so lovely. I loved it. Because people were just people. It didn't, they weren't labelled a particular role. They were just a group of people um, and they were all fabulous and they were beautiful faces on the screen. I loved that. That was the best part. Yeah. That was the, yeah. I just loved that. So I, I'll never forget, I was um, walking, I just walked down the stairs into the underground car park of the apartment that I was uh, living in last year in Melbourne at the time. And I was talking on the phone to you and I was about to get in the car. And I remember you said to me, you said, Barry, you've got a very unique company. And I was like, oh, yeah, tell me what. And you said, I've never worked in a company that's so structured in terms of systems and processes and have also got a team that is so independent and able to make decisions for themselves. You said it's a very unique mix. Either A, you've got teams that are like entrepreneurs, so entrepreneurs in an organisation and there's no structure and systems in place, or you've got a company with a lot of system processes. You said, but you've somehow managed to breed both into one business. I'll never, I'll never forget that. And I think that this is super important now more than ever especially if you are going to look to run online, online teams and um, you know, outsourced um, staff as well. Like they need to be able to make decisions without hitting you up on Slack 100 times a day. Yeah. The more that the integrator can empower the individuals within the team, the more you're going to get out of the success of the individuals which you know, connect in with the whole team. So the more that I can empower them through mistakes, through love, through all sorts of, doesn't matter, the more that I can empower them, the more that I can give them so that they can step into their role and own it, be accountable and step up for it, the the more you get from those departments and those people. So it's, it's one of the biggest joys is to see someone stepping up and shining. Yeah, I love that. I love yeah. that. And we're going to chat about that in just a second is like, yeah, building team ongoingly. I know, you know, one of the things that we hear a lot um, from new clients and prospects is around team. 
I can't find the right team. I can't retain a team. They won't do what I ask for them. You know, all this sort of stuff. And it's just not a problem that we've, like, we've had for a long time. Um, before I get there, though, uh, i got a question here from Tom from Perth. And if you are watching, please uh, jump in the chat, hit a question up. My team's there to, to feed them through to us so we can get the questions answered for you. Please hit like if you're enjoying this and also start a watch party because there's someone else that needs to hear this message too that might be struggling in business and just get the one idea out of the conversation between Heather and I that can change the face of their business and life forever. Sometimes it only takes one small thing. Uh, Tom from Perth asked, uh, if Heather could possibly consider one overseas country to expand into next, uh, like next year, what would it be? Just one. Okay. Oh, one overseas country to expand into for TGC? Uh, I don't I don't think it is for TG. So I think it is more generally maybe for his own business scalping where might be a good opportunity. And I guess that's where the difficulty is not knowing what market he's in, what product and service yeah, he's selling. If you're looking at import export, then Southeast Asia is probably a good place to be heading and, and looking at, including you would even um, you look at um, import export, you'd even look at um, you know New, um, New Zealand. It's like, what do they have that, that, that you could um, get your hands on? If you're looking at uh, pure volume, um, then obviously you've got the US is always a good place to be, massive volume. If you're looking at the US and you're looking at a particular product, a physical product, something tangible, expanding to that area is really difficult because of sales tax in the different states. So you might look at Europe, um, depending on your supply chain. Yeah. Yeah. India too has got a lot of opportunity. India, China, it yeah. does depend a lot on it does depend a lot on product and service to which market you would pick to expand into. Yeah, I think if you're looking at trade, um, you'd potentially be looking at traditionally it would be China, but we're having trade um, issues with China at the moment, not just through COVID, but through other areas that will subside. But um, Japan's always really interesting for trade for Australia. And also India is massive. We have huge import exports with India. We have a very good relationship with them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Huge, huge opportunity there as well. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's finish off this bit of a journey. We've spoken so far around like where's the business need to be at to hire an integrator? Uh, how do we start to look to, and this is a topic that I could talk about for days because I think there's so much in this as well and what it can do for a business in the right position. It's like, it is like pouring rocket fuel onto a fire. What do you feel like, what are some key things to help better manage staff and build better culture? Like I'd love to know and love you to share what you feel around that. I think there's, um, I have a, a I, an integrator needs to have an element of care. Mm. When we look at how we run the business, we don't run a business with care. We run a business with our minds and our focus and we're thinking about the bigger picture. If there's Band-Aid solutions, they shouldn't be happening because you should be looking at the bigger picture. But when you're looking at people, you must take a breath, need to take a moment and you need to have care. Hmm. If you care for the person that you're speaking to, if you really genuinely care, just lay it all down, whatever's going on, you care, then you can connect with that person and that hmm. I think is a critical element to, um, you know, connecting in with, with individuals and with, with the team. And for me, we have uh, in, internally in TGC, we have Tuesday, which is where we get together as our company day. And that's also my day of um, not output, but my day of input. So outside of, our, of the meeting with the visionary where I'm kind of outputting, the rest of the day I meet with the different departments and the rest of the team. It's all about input. I'm not pushing at them. I'm asking them to give to me and to share with me and to for me to understand. So being having a place where they can share and communicate and discuss what's what's going on with them personally and within the work within the workplace, as well as um, giving them a platform to be able to step up and empowering them. And again, it mm -hmm. comes back to caring. If you care for the people that you have under your care, they're my responsibility. It's, they're the same as being across the financials. It's even more important that we care for the people because I can't do the job of everybody by myself. I need no. people to do that job. So caring for them and understanding where they're at, it doesn't mean they can't be reprimanded and we can't be saying, well, hang on a minute, let's get, let's get down to what we need to be talking about. But it's still, you can come from a place of care. Mm. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And to add on to that, like beautifully put, a um, couple of things. Number one, vulnerability. Like 
I speak about this so often and I honestly think it's a superpower. It cer certainly has been for me in, in my leadership development the last 18 months is being vulnerable. If, you, if you're struggling with something, don't expect to have all the answers. Your team don't expect you to anyway. And the more vulnerable you can be with them, the more you're actually giving them permission consciously and unconsciously to be vulnerable with you. Because let's be honest, they spend half their life in the business anyway. So it's like a second family for them. And the more that you can show care, the more that you can support them. It's like every family has those fights around the dinner table. They have, they have the things that go on. But the more you can support them, the more they want to support the company. Like we don't collect timesheets from our staff. We have no idea what they do, when they do really. Like we don't, you know, have screen capture software because we run a virtual team. But I know that every single one of our staff members is doing the right thing by us because of the values, because of the culture we've created. They want to do the right thing by us. And I also know that if we ever happen to, to, to somehow attract and hire the wrong staff member, typically nine times out of 10, the, the team are the first ones to let us know that they need to go before, before we even have a conversation. Cause we're typically a bit fairer, like, Oh no, we can work and develop the team. Like, no, they're going to go. They're not a fit. Yeah. Um, which is great to have. So what about um, if you've got any questions too, we're going to be wrapping up in the next five to 10 minutes, uh, last chance to put any questions in. Uh, hey, Eddie. Hey, Blake. Uh, thanks for watching guys. Um, what do you feel are some actual physical things to do? So we talked about care, which is a bit more like feeling based esoteric. What do you think are some good structures to have in place to manage a team? Understanding the understanding what they do and them having a clear position description or job overview. So they understand what they do as well. Yeah. Having that reviewed and making sure that fits in with what the role is and how the role is continuing to go. So you really do need to, they need to know what their role is. That then also includes what are they accountable for as opposed to what they're responsible for. Yeah. Um, and also looking at what are their KPIs and their KPIs, KPIs in business, they can be, you know, three, four, five, um, you know, really important numbers, a KPI in a role could be just one or two small things and then 10 really big things. Yeah. Um, and it just depends on that role. So the KPIs need to be set for the role and connected into the business as well. Yeah. So understanding how that person um, functions during the day, what they need to do when they're doing something different and that's not normally within their scope, they're comfortable to be able to stretch outside that or they're comfortable to be able to put their hand up and say, I'm not sure where to go with that. Yeah. So understanding their role is really important. The next part is understanding about where they fit in the company and what that means. Who can they go to? What, where do they belong? What part of the team are they in? Are they in a department? How does that department interact? How do you connect in with management? Um, what is management? So connecting the, the connecting the individuals into their departments, into their pods, and then into the bigger picture is a really critical element. Yeah, I, I love that. And uh, what I love as well is that it's everything we do chat about in the book as well. Like we go through how to, how to create the perfect position description, how to tie that back in with the organizational chart. We talk about how to set KPIs that actually drive the business forward, how to mm -hmm. Uh, create that accountability versus responsibility. Accountability is that it's their job to get that thing over the line. It doesn't necessarily mean they're doing every part of it, mm -hmm. but it's their job to get the thing over the line. Then you have other people, maybe them and maybe others that are responsible for elements of that. It's like a relay race. It's like the person at the end, it's their job to kind of get over the line, but everyone along the way has a responsibility to pick the button up and to run it for the next person. Mm -hmm. So I understand that dynamic is very, very important. And if you're wanting to register for a pre-release copy of the book, uh, my team will put a link below. You can jump on. Uh, we'll keep you up to date with all the live streams, the amazing guests that we've got, and uh, let you know too just before the book goes live with all the bonuses. Heather, anything else that you want to share um, that you're feeling kind of compelled to share around any of the topics today or something completely different? Um, well, I could share plenty, but we've got we've just got a couple of yeah. I think the key thing for an integrator is um, in, in this role, well, there's two key things. One is to connect with the visionary. If you don't get that connection, it's not the right fit. It's okay. It's, you know, it's, it's just not the right fit. But when you do get the right fit, and I'm so lucky that um, I've got the right fit with you, I feel that I, have, I think that that's when the magic really happens. That's when things can really take off. And the passion and joy that comes out of being able to do a job with clear direction is really, really good. The yeah. other part is with an integrator, and I, I, I'm a big believer in this, is that there's two parts to uh, working in operations. One is the physical doing. 
So that's the operational management. And the other one is more of the governance, which is hands off. So hands in is the operations. We're actually working out what do we need to do? How do we implement this vision? Where do we go? The other part is the hands off when you're making decisions that are for 10 years time or for five years time, when something's going wrong, when something's going right, when something's spinning really, really fast and you've got to prioritize really quickly. The key element to be able to do is like, what do I need to do hands in? And what happens when I've got hands off? What decisions would I make if I wasn't touching this? And that yeah. really makes it very clear for me at a much higher level to take us from this level all the way up to the next levels because I've got a very clear path. And yeah. it's not just about the doing, it's about the planning to do the doing. Yeah, that, that's, that's a clear sign of the right person, the right role, because it's not just the visionary's role to be thinking short, medium and long term. Like there's got to be an element, the integrator's got to be able to pick that up and have an element of that as well. So not constantly just stuck in fighting fires or playing the short term game. Yeah. They've, they've got to do the governance. They've got to play the longer term game of positioning um, as well of the company. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Hey, it's been such a pleasure having you on. And look, if you got value out of watching this today live on the replay, please hit like, uh, please tag a couple of people in that you know and businesses and might need to hear what we've shared today. And also to start a watch party. It's a really effective way to gather people on board and share what we're doing here. We've got some amazing guests uh, coming through over the next four to, to six weeks and would love to have as many people uh, get the knowledge to help them to grow businesses and create businesses that can be profitable purpose-driven and can run without them as well. Heather, really appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. This has been fun. You normally integrators are in the background, so this is kind of nice. Yeah, it's been great. It's been great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Game Changers podcast. Uh, there's a couple of things I'd love you to do to help us and help yourself to spread the message further. Uh, make sure that you like the Game Changers on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, please subscribe by clicking the link below to ensure that you keep up to date with the weekly episodes we uh, share here at the Game Changers podcast with amazing entrepreneurs and business owners around the world. And of course, like if you're in a position where you may be overwhelmed with business or looking for a way to grow faster, more effectively, and you realize that the key to success is being surrounded by amazing people who have been there and done that before, I'd like to invite you to apply to have a game plan session one-on-one -on -one with one of my team here at The Game Changers. There's no cost. If you get through, uh, all that we ask is that you are doing a minimum of $250,000 per year to really be able to utilize the strategies and tactics and the mindset shifts that we share with you, uh, that you're coachable, that you're a decent person and you're, you know, you're willing to take on board some advice. If not, that's totally cool. Uh, but I know for me, I wouldn't be where I'm right now without the support of so many mentors and coaches and resources along the way. And I'd like to pay that forward and give back to you the opportunity to work with uh, us one-on-one -on -one for free to put together a customized game plan. And the reason we're doing this is a couple of things. Number one is that sometimes it's just the smallest thing that can make the biggest difference. And uh, I think that entrepreneurs and business owners have the opportunity to change the world. And if we can maybe help you to, to make the smallest shift to change your life and your world, uh, you're changing ours in return. The second thing is that we are always looking for amazing clients to work with and to welcome into and invite into the Game Changers community. And so if at the end of the call, you do feel that there's a huge amount of value there, uh, that we fit, feel that there's a great value fit there, we can have a conversation about working together. But uh, this game plan call, there's absolutely no obligations to work with whatsoever. Allow us to help you with uh, the years and years and years of, of, of knowledge that we have in growing and scaling great companies and uh, I think that uh, business owners are the future of the world if there's a way that we can help you to create a better business more profit more fulfillment more fun I would love the opportunity to do that now so click the link below book your game plan session make sure you follow us on social and stay up to date with the latest episodes of the Game Changers podcast my name is Barry William McGinnity thank you so much for your support and look forward to seeing the next one Happy now.